Welcome to the legislative session for Thursday, March 5th. Uh, would everyone please turn off their cell phones and electronic devices and rise for a moment of silence and close your flight. Steve Newhouse. Okay. Oh, roll call first. I'm sorry. Bonasek? Here. Ekis? Here. Amo? Here. Anagnostakis? Here. Benton? Here. Berkman? Here. Benelli? Here. Cheney? Here. Dillard? Here. DeSalvo? Present. Hines? Here. Chemnitz? Here. Kulsek? Fiduk? Ruskevich? Here. Simmons? Here. Sullivan? Here. Turnbull? Vero, Wong, Gresham, 21 present. Yeah, I'd like to ask County Exec Steve Newhouse to come up, uh, Legislator Chris Ekis, Minority Leader, excuse me, Kelly Allegra, MS Advocacy District Leader, Kathy Ferrero, Debbie Wells, Donna Plunkett, and Veteran and Retired State Police Officer Don, he's not here today, right? Yeah. I don't believe that. Ladies, you want to come up? Who took the proclamation yesterday? <laughs> this doesn't sound too good. Well, we, did, we took a picture of the proclamation, so. <laughs> okay, yeah, we got the picture yesterday. It was good. So you want to say a few words, Steve, first? Um, well, if you uh, if you saw online already, we have the photos of uh, of um, legislators uh, Ekus and and, uh, and Brescia, Chairman Brescia, uh as well as we're recreating the photo today or talking about it today, but. Um, when we do find the proclamation, uh, Kelly, do you want to uh, introduce some of the guests up here as well? Um, this, hi, my name is Lisa. So it's Kelly Allegra. I am an advocate with the MS Society and the district leader, and we thank you very much for having us here. Um, with me also is my uh, partner in crime, my uh, fellow advocate, Donna Panessa, uh, who is very active with me on state and federal and the issues working for people with multiple sclerosis. So we're very happy to be here and thank you very much for this recognition and bringing awareness to uh, people who really need it. Thank you. And I, I don't know if you mind, would you mind if I give you a mic? To talk, say, say a few words because you, what you told us what you've yes. just gotten back from and, and we're, what you plan on doing next year. You guys mind? Okay. Right. Nobody speaks better than the Africans than the uh, people that are living with this. So. Do uh, you want to just tell them where you came from, what you just succeeded in doing in, in London? Um, hi, well this morning I was actually at meetings in Kingston and um, I'm very active despite the MS and it's really important to me to be able to speak on behalf of everybody with disabilities, both the physical and the invisible. I'm proud to say that, um, as a county executive just mentioned, that I actually represented the United States um, in para-equestrian dressage at the, the Olympics in um, London 2012 and um, have my sights set on going to Rio in 2016 again to try to win a gold for the U.S. Chairman Brescher and uh, Legislator Ekus and I were blown away from this yesterday when, we're, when we were uh, talking about this. So uh, Kelly and I and uh, Jimmy Poolsack are graduates of Leadership Orange together, so it's good to see uh, our fellow graduates moving on and doing great things. Uh, this is all about bringing awareness to MS and, and how people living with MS are overcoming the, uh, the, the uh, you know, challenges in front of them and moving on and representing us in great ways and being active uh, and, uh, leaders in, in our community. So thank you very much for being here today. I'll turn it over to the chairman. Thank you, Kelly and Donna and ladies for being here today. Um, I've known Donna for quite a while. Her parents, John and Alberta, I used to see him down at Newburgh Yacht Club and Donna used to speed around on her Wave Runner. And I tell you, she didn't let anything hold her back. She really didn't. Um, you know, this MS, I'm proud as a, as a legislator and on behalf of the legislature to salute this as MS Week. And, uh, you know, all you want is, is to make it real. And you do. I mean, you live your life as independently, independently excuse me, independently as you humanly can possibly do. 
and uh, and we recognize that. We really do. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. Um, you failed to mention that you don't no longer go to the Newburgh Yacht Club because your boat sank. Um, but otherwise, uh, <laughs> but uh, all I can say is God bless these two advocates. Without advocates, we wouldn't be any place. And uh, there, as Steve, you mentioned it. There's nothing better than an actual role model. And and I thank you very much. And like these two gentlemen and these twenty odd behind you, we are in full support of what you do and whatever we can do for you. Thank you. And I sold my way down too, but I couldn't keep up with you. Leader Ekus. Am I on? Am I on? <coughs> thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Chairman Brescia for allowing me to do this. It's a little bit out of the ordinary, but it, he knew, I knew, and I think all of the legislators up here knew it needed to be done. <clears throat> I have a statement to read. We can all agree to disagree, but even the public should not bully, threaten, or intimidate elected officials with the implied or actual threat of physical harm. A basic premise of the Orange County Legislature is that we are and remain open, transparent, and communicative of government processes, individual beliefs, and differing opinions. This allows the public, our constituents, to know where we stand and our basic philosophies on issues. We as a legislature will have differing opinions from time to time. However, we have vowed to respect each other's opinions and differences and use them as points of discussion. As elected officials, we will not use offensive, violent, or intimidating language in order to make a point we can effectively make our point without lowering ourselves to these levels of insult and bullying. As elected officials, we also support open dialogue and differences of opinion with our constituents. The Orange County Legislature supports all citizens' First Amendment rights under the United States Constitution, which prohibits abridging of freedom of speech, infringing on the freedom of the press, interfering with the right to peaceably assemble, or prohibiting the petitioning for a government, governmental redress of grievances. We oppose bullying, threatening or intimidating elected officials with the implied or actual threat of physical harm. The Orange County Legislature will, within its capabilities, vehemently oppose any action which steps beyond disagreement and can be considered bullying, threatening, or intimidating an elected or other governmental officials with the implied or actual threat of physical harm. The judicial system will determine the level of the offensive behavior permitted, but let it be known that we will do everything in our power to prohibit this behavior against any of our elected or governmental officials in Orange County. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Chris, for reading the statement. I, I know that several of us, we've spoken about this, stand behind this statement 100%. And the only thing that I wanted to add to that is that as a, a high school teacher, um, it's a message we teach to our youth. Um, and I do find it somewhat sad that as adults we have to say it publicly. You would think by now it's understood. But unfortunately in society, I think it's something that we have to remind people um, that we will not tolerate this. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd just like to add as chairman of the legislature that, uh, you know, we do have passionate disagreements. We argue and sometimes we get a little loud. But, uh, you know, free speech is not always absolute, as Oliver Wendell Holmes once said. 
And <coughs> what, what transpired over the last week and a half, um, I think he probably had in mind. I think it was horrible, despicable, disrespectful, and it was nothing less than bullying, Chris. Really was nothing less than that. And I, I hope we stand as a full legislature against such behavior. Uh, one legislator was shaken, and, and that shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Um, people have a right to change their minds or, or you know, differ on opinions all the time. And uh, I just, we don't condone that kind of behavior, and it, it really was below the belt, and I hope it doesn't happen henceforth. Okay, Majority Leader Bonasek. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead. Public participation, uh, Town of Wellkill Supervisor Dan DePew. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, it's great to be back here. People say, do you miss it? I say every day. I really do. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be back, and it's a great thing to be back on positive circumstances. A little over four and a half months ago, I approached um, Chairman of the Public Safety and Emergency Services Committee, Chairman uh, Kevin Hines, and asked him if he would entertain an open discussion regarding a program to require auto automatic vehicle locators and ambulances in the county. And uh, at that time, it was, it was, I also asked my legislators who are Michael Paduk, Roseanne Sullivan, Melissa Bonasek, and Steve Brescia, to consider this discussion and consider this initiative. Um, in that time, uh, a lot of debate went back and forth of how to do it, what would be the way, right way to prescribe doing it, but in simple, common terms. I ask you to ask yourself and ask your colleagues, your friends, and particularly your family, if you or they were in distress, having a heart attack, or some type of medical ailment, wouldn't you want the closest ambulance to be dispatched to them as soon as possible? And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the ability to use technology to benefit our societies and our way of life and the quality of life here in Orange County. You know, I believe in my heart that 25 years from now, pretty much everywhere in the country, this will be a policy. But we've had the technology for at least 10 years to do it today. So why do we have to wait so long to get behind such a good thing? In Orange County, many times we could become the trailblazers. We could become the ones who set the good, positive example of the way things need to be done. I think supporting this program, even in its infancy stages in the town of Wallkill, is the best way to advocate for change in a positive direction into this regard. We should never allow money and greed to be the determining factor in who responds to a call. And I don't mean to pinpoint any one entity, but as you all know, volunteer services throughout the county have been really strapped. And now they have billing processes to pay some of their people. And we have some great fine institutions that are for-profit ambulance services in the county that supplement our voluntary services. But when we dispatch a call, we don't want them to be rushing somewhere to get somewhere from an area that is too far away thinking about money, not about patients. I think having the GPS system, the ABL system installed in these vehicles will make it very simple. It's a matter of fact. You're the closest entity that is responsible to get to this location and save someone's life. Go there now. And that's what the goal is. So I urge you all today to support uh, the resolution before you, which is, I believe, agenda item 23. I want to thank everyone who was involved and helped getting into this point. And I recognize that there are political differences and there are regional significant issues throughout the county in different areas. You may represent a district that is not ready to, Im to implement such a system. The town of Wallkill is ready. I have to thank Mobile Life. Since our last committee meeting and since the bold decision was made to bring this issue to the full legislature for support, Mobile Life has spent several thousand dollars on hardware and software upgrades to be able to deliver to Orange County 911 to their CAD system what would need to show the location of those vehicles. And today, at 1245 this afternoon, I received a phone call from Kevin, working from Mobile Life's command, telling me that the server at the Orange County 911 Center now shows that, that information. So we are just so close to being able to make it happen. Please support this now, in the future, and make sure we get there. Thank you. Thank you. Althea Malarkey, Walden, Senior Cutson.
Hello, and thank you very much for uh, allowing me to speak for a few minutes today. This is regarding, I believe it's item number 14 on your agenda. I'm part of a larger environmental and municipal group that is urging GE to take advantage of an opportunity that they have to finish out their cleanup of General Electric's responsibility, Upper Hudson, take responsibility for their NRD, clean up some more PCBs in the Upper Hudson, and do it now before they remove themselves from the Upper Hudson, which is due to happen sometime next fall. A lot of people are aware that General Electric took on the responsibility of cleaning up targeted sections in the Upper Hudson. It's a 197-mile Superfund site, so this community, Orange County, every Hudson Valley County that has waterfront is part of the Superfund site. What we saw happen when they agreed to do the Upper Hudson cleanup only is targeted sections, certain parts of it. They negotiated with EPA where they dredged. They did a really great job. No one actually could do a better job than General Electric to remove PCBs from a, a river system. As they close up their EPA part of the project, they're facing something called an NRD, where they have to compensate the public, Orange County residents, Putnam County residents, New York City residents, the entire Hudson Valley community, they have to compensate you for the, the loss of services and the injured resource that we've endured for over 40 years. Part of that could be cleaning up additional PCBs in the Upper Hudson. I brought some maps. It's not really conducive to holding it up right now, but I am going to have it in the back for you to look at so you can understand what we're talking about. So General Electric is very well aware that they have this NRD liability waiting for them. And everywhere else in the country, when you have a Superfund cleanup site, you can do your NRD at the same time. That is what we're asking General Electric to do right now. Typically, General Electric does not voluntarily do anything for the goodness of their heart. They respond to public pressure, they respond to political pressure, and they respond when people are paying attention and asking questions. And the resolution that's before you today is part of that process is putting General Electric on notice that we are aware of this responsibility and we really are urging them to take care of it now. Don't make us wait 15 years while you negotiate another agreement. You can take care of it immediately. Anybody have any questions about what about the resolution? I'm available for questions. <laughs> so I just want to let you know that Putnam County passed it last night. Uh, Westchester County has it on the agenda next month. Ulster County has already passed it. And several communities in Orange County has already passed this resolution, including the city of Newburgh and the town of New Windsor as well. They put this as a priority. Having a cleaner, healthier Hudson sooner rather than later should be a priority for all of us. And I hope that you guys agree. Thank you. Thank you. Can you help me? Thanks. Appreciate it. Vincent Ferry, uh, agenda item number 16. Good afternoon. I recently researched uh, a, a case with SHPO where they had interceded for, uh, for an applicant uh, because a developer was going to put something there in a historic place. It would, uh, it would have damage of use yet. Uh, in that particular case, uh, they uh, <coughs> said that in a federal highway funds catchment area, SHPO involvement and federal rules kick in. I see that you're accepting federal highway funds. Uh, I assume it's for the conversion of uh, Route 17. Um, and I just want to confirm that. Does anyone know that it's for Route 17? <coughs> I guess we're not speaking. Okay, um, and I also was wondering why in the communication section the uh, uh, ethics law didn't kick in with the uh, uh, process to choose CPL. And by the way, for those of you who can't read, I'll be happy to buy some uh, primaries, <coughs> elementary school primaries. Thank you. Thank you. Please refrain from such remarks from henceforth. Mr. Ferrier, I'll ask you to leave next time. Thank you. Vincent Esposito, last speaker on agenda items. Good afternoon. I'm Vincent Esposito, and uh, I'm here 
today to give my support for, I believe it's item 21 for uh, the sparkling devices uh, resolution. I was one of the original architects of this uh, legislation that we got passed uh, in November, Governor Cuomo had signed it. This was really a, it was 15 years worth of going back and forth to try and make it palatable uh, to everybody. And this was the best compromise bill that we can get. And I believe it's gonna create a lot of jobs in the community for far too long. We've seen too many people go out of state only to come back in and not spend the money in New York State and bring the tax revenue that is deserved in the area and also the jobs that go along with it. The type of sparkling devices uh, that are mentioned in the, uh, in the statute are the most benign types of sparkling devices, such as snappers that you throw on the ground, party poppers, sparklers, but only the type that have a uh, bamboo handle, wooden handle, there's no metal handles allowed. Mountains, there's nothing that's aerial, no rockets, nothing, anything like that. And uh, naturally, uh, safety being uh, the biggest concern, uh, that's why we, you know, we always start off the way we did. And as more states become legal, and I think there's only like three states left, you see the injury rate goes down. Uh, it becomes more and more legalized. Any it's not a Q&A today, oh, okay. it's just a statement. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Majority Leader Bonasek. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the minutes of November 13, 2014. Second. Okay, if there are no objections, that'll be done. And are there any objections? I mean, excuse me, with referrals, consents, or withdrawals? Steve, Stephen. Oh, you have one more? Yes, yeah, okay. sorry. This one's a good one. Oh, yeah, okay. It's I move to vote collectively on items number 29 to 33. Right. Okay, so, so be it. Okay, uh, referrals, consents, or withdrawals? Chair? Chair? Mr. Chairman, I have a uh, consent resolution. I believe all the legislators have that on our desk concerning the uh, demolition process at the Orange County Government Center. I respectfully ask that it be placed on the agenda for consideration. Time is of the essence because uh, the information about the bids came in after the committee had already met. <clears throat> and if it's not addressed now, it could be too late. <clears throat> Pardon me. The contract could be awarded, and uh, it would be the issue would be decided without having proper legislative oversight. Legislator Simmons, Mr. Chairman, it wouldn't be a normal legislative meeting if I didn't object to the consent, which I will do one of my last official acts. So I object to placing it on agenda by consent. Thank you. Okay, so this will be discussion on the objection, whether or not to put it on the agenda. Any other discussion on that, or we'll take a vote. A yes vote would be to put it on the agenda, and no would be not to, correct? Okay. Legislator Hines. I just have a procedural, procedural uh, issue with it. Uh, I think that uh, my understanding as the bidding works is that when the, bidders, the bids come in, that the executive branch has the opportunity to negotiate with the low bidder. Can you just confirm that, please, Antoinette? I believe the county executive put his puts his team to work, uh, and uh, they review the uh, bids, and uh, then the, they may negotiate down or negotiate some of the uh, work that's there. So there is some mobility on that. Um, I, I do have concerns about the second result on uh, the resolution, um, and it says the result: the legislature and the appropriate statutory and special oversight committee review the demolition plans with the objective of reducing the scope and scale of the uh, demolition requirements in order to save unnecessary expenditures, keeping with the approved plan of substantial restoration and renovation of Division One and Number Three and save taxpayer money. Um, this really is not the, uh, the county executive and um, his uh, team 
on these projects uh, come before the Buildings Committee and the Physical Services Committee. They report on progress. Um, and uh, they do receive input from the legislature, uh, but this is solely within the prerogative of the uh, county executive. So, although the first result, the first result is correct that we can urge the county executive to reject both submitted and received demolition bids, um, we really don't have to take. Uh, we can't really take any action with respect to uh, reducing the scope of the uh, project um, and. Uh, and to um, determine uh, the, the value thereof. Thank you. Uh, that's what I thought. I appreciate that. So, it, in, in my mind, the process will be the county executive with Mr. Burpo and Mr. Vibrock will uh, will beat up the low bidder and, and try to put this in the right perspective. So, thank you. Right. I, and we do have. Um, yeah, I understand that there can be quite a bit of value engineering and, and deducts from the contracts once they're signed or before they're signed, rather. Um, let's talk, let's keep the discussion to the consent resolution, not the, not the merits of the consent, but whether it's going on the agenda or not. Okay, Legislator Amo is next, and then Ekus, then Berkman, and I saw a hand up over there. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think that one of the, the points that Mr. Berkman made, that the reason we're having this consent is that the, it came after the statutory committee was met, and therefore no opportunity. This is the second time, I think, with respect to that, our same problem this legislature has had, where something happened after our committee meeting, and then when we tried to put it on the consent, I think we objected to it. I think we need to remind and perhaps even discuss some rules at next month or in the future, that when that happens, we do have the right to call a special meeting. If, that, if the chairman of that committee feels it's his or her responsibility in her own, in her own review, that it's necessary to call a special meeting. And I'm referencing, because I'm referencing in my case only the Commissioner of Social Services, I totally object, I totally made the mistake because I did not call a special meeting, and I have the right to do that. And I think we need to be more affirmative with that, that authority as chairpersons of the committees that we are assigned to by the chairman of the legislature. So I don't think that's a good enough reason for a consent. Okay. I know our leader needs Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think the reason why this came forward was, and anybody can correct me uh, if I misspeak here, but we were actually in a physical services committee and we got um, basically the approval and the consent from the county executive uh, to direct, uh, in this case, uh, Clark Patterson and Lee to put it an addendum on the demolition RFP. And that addendum was going to be give us a bid for what it would be to take all the block down and a bid for not taking any of the block down. And I don't think any of us want to be discussing this right here and right now. And I had hoped actually between Thursday and Thursday, I guess Friday, when I found out through the newspapers, unfortunately I do a lot of stuff, found out that these bids came in that the county exec was going to say, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Clark Patterson and Lee did not do what we had asked them, and that's put an addendum. And we were going to do that, if you recall, am I not correct, instead of a change order, so that we were going to save money. Uh, so I think that's why we're actually talking about this right now, that we were going to get those two different bids in and, and do a comparison there. The, the uh, decision, the, the committee meeting that we had was two days or three days before the bid was due, and the opinion of Chris Vibrock and legal was that some bids were mailed in. We did have one bid that was mailed in, so by issuing that change, it would have been too late to get them back, and that Mr. Vibrock, like I think um, Kevin Hines had mentioned already, can renegotiate that on the back end and add that addendum on if you want to. So. Um, the issue of the out exterior skin can be post negotiated if we wanted to to ask them for a change on it. So that's that's how that happened. Chris was in. I, I think when we had left that it was a meeting that it came up last at the last part of the meeting, and by the time he digested it and went back and forth with everybody, it was too late. So that's why it didn't happen that night. Makes perfect sense. Uh, but just to be sure, I understand what you're saying. Um, so what you're telling us is that these bids that we got in are not necessarily the bids that we're going to accept at Absolutely. this point. You could and change it, and there's a million dollars in contingency, 
which this wasn't my bid, this wasn't my project of my engineer, but all that stuff was done prior to me getting in there. So that one, there was $1 million added to that, uh, that bid that we got in at 7.4, 7.8, that is for contingency, which is or isn't industry standards. Some people said that's way overboard, so what I'm saying to you is that's a million dollars right off the bat that could change. Just one more yeah. thing, and, and I'll turn over the microphone. Uh, so then you're agreeing that we will have an opportunity to take a look at Absolutely. whether every, all the blocks come down or whether they don't come down. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Jeff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my question, is it possible to call a special meeting to hash this out? Well, we can all, always call a special meeting of the Fiscal Services or Buildings Committee meeting. I, I think uh, you may want to give the county executive some time to uh, review the bids with his team uh, and then report back to us. We will have a Buildings Committee meeting in, uh, in March, and if the chairman, uh, along with the committee chair, determines that uh, they want a special committee meeting on that, they could do that, that also. Thank you, Mr. Berkman, for allowing me to jump ahead. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, upon the receipt, and actually just prior to uh, the bids being received, I did have conversations as the chair of physical services uh, with the county executive. Uh, we discussed, I also spoke with the county attorney, we discussed the options that are available to us, and I know what your concern is, Chris, and we have agreed that um, we haven't set, I mean, right now we're looking at usually It died. I don't know the way it Maybe. <laughs> um, we usually are having our buildings committee meeting before physical. We've talked about possibly changing the date. So all I can say is that I, I want all of my colleagues to know that I have been in contact pretty closely with the county executive as well as the county attorney because I do understand what your concerns are and I do take them very seriously and you have some very valid concerns and we will have that opportunity. Sure. Mr. Chairman, as soon as I found out uh, the results or the, the money from the bids, which were quite alarming to discover because it was 100% higher than what we had budgeted, in fact, more than that. Uh, so it was kind of a big red flag that we needed proper oversight. As soon as I heard about that, I wrote a memo to every legislator asking for uh, an immediate meeting in order to address this issue. For whatever the reason, that didn't happen. So I feel that this is a totally appropriate time for consent resolution. That's step one. I mean, <laughs> otherwise, uh, why not? You know, why uh, why have the procedure in our in our charter for for consent resolutions? This is exactly for what it served. That the purpose for this provision is, if you miss the meeting and it happens subsequently to that, then then you have an opportunity to discuss it. So I, I feel very comfortable with that part of it. And hopefully that that resolves that question that some people may have. Next, this has been, as we all know, a long process for this building, and we came up with a compromise after a long struggle. And the compromise, in a nutshell, was that Division Two would be taken down to the foundation, and a new building would, be, would replace it with a new entrance facing the parking lot that would hopefully be befitting of that type of governmental structure rather than that very uncomfortable former access to the building, right, that we all used. It also called for the renovations of Division One and Three, and that was the basis of the compromise. And like, like all compromises, uh, people have, uh, are, they're not totally satisfied, but that's where we went forward with a very solid majority. And uh, since then, we found that uh, the demolition component goes way past the scope that at least I envisioned and that many of my colleagues had envisioned. Taking down unnecessary uh, components of Division 1 and 3, which we thought we were actually protecting. So if you go into that Rudolph design, for instance, of the courtrooms, the current plan, according to uh, CPL, is to demolish the courtroom and the walls there as well, the internal and external walls. And I saw that as an unnecessary expense, particularly since 
after speaking with the judges, uh, the judge, that, that there was no request to knock down the, the courtroom. So that's just one example of where if we review that which is actually being demolished, we have a, a, an opportunity to cut back on perhaps millions of dollars of unnecessary demolition costs. Also, I'd like to at least give a nod towards the preservationists. The idea of the compromise that we, we would keep the soul and character of the Rudolph Building in Division One and Three. Well, this complete dismemberment on the inside is very disconcerting to me, particularly since I didn't know it was happening until just the other day, the most recent meeting with Mr. Clark, and nobody, no other legislators that I know of were aware of it either. So the, I felt that it's time for us to take a closer look. Closer look. Because if we don't stop the wrecking ball today, it could go forward tomorrow. So, and, and uh, at least I'm trying to prevent that. Now, in the interest of pragmatism here, if it, if it helps Mr. Hines or some others that are hesitant, I'll remove the second result. If you feel that there's a procedural defect there, I'm willing to take that out and just have the first result, which says that the, 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 the demolition bids are out until we know exactly what we're demolishing. take roll call on the objection. We're getting off the subject here first. I mean, I get, you want to speak on the objection? Yes, okay. On the objection to the consent, not on the consent so much. Okay. All right, let's get, yes, Shannon. On the, on the objection we're speaking to. Um, so I have a question about when the bids would actually be awarded. What I'm trying to ascertain is if it's necessary to do this on consent or if it can wait to go through our next uh, buildings committee, which I believe is March 23rd. Langdon, do you want to answer that? Why don't you come up and you want to sit in the front row? Because you might be called upon a few times today. <laughs> I mean, the bid awards are really a function of when they get negotiated, as, as you folks have properly noted. You know, Mr. Burpo and, and uh, Mr. Bybrock will go, you know, talk with the low bidder and, and get potential alternatives, as we've talked about here today, and negotiate and award it. So it's really a function of how quickly can they come to an agreement with the bidder. And that, that's really the process. And the addendum can be incorporated into that and possibly saving further features of the divisions one and three. Sure, right. we can negotiate almost anything with the low bidder. Right, and those, and you'll certainly listen to legislators with those concerns. Too. Only you, Mr. Chairman. Only me. Yeah, <laughs> my birthright. You know what you said on Saturday. <laughs> so, okay, thank you. Uh, we'll be calling on you again, I'm sure. Okay, Shannon, does that answer your question? <laughs> on buildings committee, you're asking. Yeah, I mean, it's really, Chairman, part of the negotiating process. That's a function of how fast can that be negotiated. You might have a bidder who comes in and says, you know, to, we're stuck with low bidder, so let's all start with that premise. Then you can negotiate with that low, lowest responsible. So then we can negotiate with that lowest responsible bidder. And if, if they come in and say, look, if you want to do whatever it is with the walls, it's this. The exec has the authority to accept that at this point. You bonded for it. It's completely approved. And you can move on. If they turn around and say it's it's this plus or it's this double or whatever, obviously that that's a different story. So, you know, you can have a special committee meeting if you want to express your opinions if you want to. But our first thing is we've got to take the temperature of the bidder and, and ask them some of the tough questions, and that's something that that Barbara and Bybrock will do. Right, and the horse isn't out of the barn. It's premature. You know, if we have a buildings committee meeting in two weeks, we can still express those concerns. But there's a horse so in the barn at this point, but it's not. Right, out of the barn. right, and it's not going to be out of the barn in the next two weeks, really. So, okay, uh, on the consent, a yes vote is to allow the consent, a no vote is to not allow. Mr. Chairman, I'd yes. Like to speak on, on the objection, right? Well, Bob, we're not going to talk about the consent unless it makes it to a, you know, if a yes vote carries, then we're going to talk about the consent. We're talking about the objection. 
Okay. Correctly. Not to confuse you. The objection would leave this off of the agenda. Uh, if the objection is upheld with a no vote. On, by reasons described in communications that I'm going to recuse from this vote. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Uh, roll call. Yes means it's going forward. No means it's right. No is to not put it on the agenda. Honesty? No. Ekis? Yes. Emo? No. Nagnostakis? Yes. Benton? No. Berkman? Yes. Benelli? No. Cheney? No. Dillard? No. DeSalvo? No. Hines? No. Hemnance? Yes. Bullisek? Abstain. The Duke? Yes. Riskevich? Simmons? No. Sullivan? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Bureau? No. Wong? No. Gresham? No. Seven eyes, 13 no's, one abstention. Okay, any other referrals, consents, or withdrawals? Legislator Sullivan. Chairman Presher, I have a resolution titled um, Resolution Terminating the Contract of Clark, Patterson, and Lee Relating to the Renovation of the Orange County Government Center. Legislator Simmons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I said before, I object and I go further than the last one for many of the same reasons that uh, if you go to the last and only resolved, it talks about terminating the contract with uh, CPL and uh, I don't believe that that's within the purview of the legislature either, so I object. Point, point of, uh, I just want to uh, point, of order. point out, point of order, um, in the last resolve of the, um, of this resolution, it says um, that we are directing the county executive to take all appropriate actions in the furtherance of this resolution, therefore directing him to um, terminate the contract. Again, Mr. Chairman, I don't believe we have that, uh, no, that uh, purview. Okay. Discussion on the objection. Legislator Nagnostakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've got a very brief uh, written statement. Before I get to that, I just wanted to, uh, to make the point. Um, I really believe in my heart that every single one of the elected officials standing, sitting up here, every single one of us always always tries to do what they think is best for their constituents and Orange County overall. I have no doubt about that in my mind. We may disagree sometimes. We may not see things the same way, but people are trying to do the best job they can. And in the end, law prevails, majority rules, and we move forward. Now, this particular resolution, I think, is very timely right now because I think we are in extraordinary times here in Orange County. And again, I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for letting me speak. I usually don't read prepared statements. However, I'm doing just that today because it is important that every single word and number be said correctly. Today, as we move forward with our 2015 agenda and ambitious goals, we currently operate with an illegal, unbalanced, county budget. Some actions were taken by the executive and this legislature to reduce the 2015 budget. But page 48 of the O'Connor Davies analysis of the executive's 2015 county budget shows the use of 33.8 million of reserves to help close the deficit that remained. An additional 12.1 million of deficit remains unclosed. The 2015 budget thus expected a 45.9 million. Legislator Magnus, is this germane to the, to the objection? By the time I get to the end of this, you will see why it is germane and we should allow this resolution to move forward. So as I was saying, the 2015 budget thus expected a 45.9 million revenue shortfall. No, pl no plan to close this gap has been put forward as we sit here, and we sit here as if nothing is wrong, continuing 
to want to spend more money. Reserves to help plug the deficit are dwindling. The Department of Finance unaudited year-end 2014 numbers just given to this legislature shows total general fund reserves of 96 million, down from $159 million just two years before. And this 2014 year-end balance does not yet factor in the 33.8 million that we used in 2015. Again, we sit here as if nothing is wrong, continuing to spend more and more money. Yes, some debt will be retired over the next handful of years. Unfortunately, new spending will overwhelm those savings. The Government Center Project is a huge contributor to our debt service cost increases. It is unconscionable to move forward with the spending, and for the record, I voted against this spending plan. Page 34 of our 2015 County Capital Plan shows that all this spending will increase our debt service payments from the current $30 million a year we pay in 2015 to a payment of $46 million in 2018. That would increase our current budget shortfall of $45.9 million by an additional $16 million. When this happens, there can be no excuse that we had no idea that we were spending too much money. Is all this spending being done with a different goal in mind? Well, even if you could sell a prize county asset, the amount of one-shot money received would not even cover one half of this gap for one year. And the sale of that facility would then actually start to increase future county budget deficits from that point forward. No, as I've said for many years, the answer is to stop all but the most absolutely essential spending and to also cut expenses in all departments. Accordingly, unless a spending resolution is absolutely essential, I will continue as I've done in the past to vote no to such spending increases. I understand that many of these items will be worth wor worthy projects, but we just do not have the money to spend on them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll submit this for the record, and I think we need to move forward and stop spending on this project. Yes, I, I would just like to uh, provide some advice to the uh, legislative body. Uh, the resolved res uh, provision, uh, in my view, is illegal, um, and it goes back to a case uh, that was uh, litigated between uh, Mary McPhillips, the uh, former county executive in the county legislature, uh, whereby the county legislature, I believe, um, made a direction to the uh, county executive regarding uh, the location of uh, the jail. And uh, at that time, the county was looking to locate the jail uh, either in Goshen, Middletown, uh, I believe the city of Newburgh, for historians here. And uh, the the, uh, it was litigated and the court ruled uh, that the county legislature did not have the authority to direct the county executive to take any appropriate actions. Uh, you could authorize the county executive, you could urge the county executive, but you have no power over the county executive. Further discussion? Yes, Legislator Sullivan. Right. Um, I have no problem changing the wording there to urge, but let's get back to allowing this um, for further discussion. Things change rather quickly around here. In fact, just the other day we found out about these bids going over budget, um, which is a sign. I'm afraid that um, due to that um, estimation um, being totally out there that the rest of the project is will follow um this contract is nothing new this we've all seen this contract before um i i um, have faith that we've all read it and i also have faith that everything that's listed in this resolution refers legally directly back to the contract it is all fact I've listened to, I've uh, done a lot of listening lately. Um, we had a lot of discussion about the Kaufman plan and um, what I've 
found out is that we really didn't have enough votes for that Kaufman plan at the time. And what I found out is that there are a lot of different legislators, Republicans, uh, Independents, party members, Democrats, who have their own ideas on what should be done here. And, um, and so this resolution is my response to what I have already heard in committee and at sessions. Um, County residents are looking to us right now to put a stop to a runaway train. Some of us may not believe that this is a runaway, runaway train, but I believe that it is. And I believe that the media believes that it is a runaway train, and many other state and federal organizations believe it is as well. You don't like to, you don't have to like the Kaufman Building to understand that what we are about to do is to demolish a, a multi-million investment that county residents have made over 40 years ago. We should not be forcing one option that has gotten totally carried out of hand down the throat of our constituents and into their already starving pockets. I think that one thing that we can all agree to here, or most of us can agree to, is that we are not happy with being surprised every time we have a different physical services committee meeting. It has nothing to do with the physical services committee, but it has everything to do with CPL. Um, we should not go for, um, again, uh, we have to take action. Um, right now, our constituents are looking at us and thinking, why on earth don't you put a stop to this? Believe me, we are not the only people who feel that, it had, that the project has gotten out of hand. I hear about it from different people every single day. And there is no way that you're not hearing the same thing I'm hearing. Um, all I'm asking for today is to take a few minutes in our legislative session to discuss the facts that I have laid out in this resolution which per perfectly reflect the contract and how that contract has been broken. So I ask you, if we go to the, if we go to the trouble of spelling out a contract as well as we did, then why not take a minute, review that contract, and see if it's working for us or not? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, there's a lot here. I was listening to my um, fellow legislator, Mr. Agnagastakis, uh, who, um, like me, uh, considers his first responsibility interpretation of his oath uh, is to, to treat these tax dollars um, the way they should be treated. You know, it, it's, it's important for us to look at every aspect of any project and make sure that we're getting the best bang for the buck, and certainly that's been something I've talked a lot about over the years. So I want to, I'm not going to go into a lot of <clears throat> reasons why I think this resolution should be allowed a chance to, or a vote on, on the floor today, um, but I'm going to, I'm going to say this. Um, over my 30 years in the construction industry, I had the privilege of uh, being in a lot of different environments, and I had the privilege of estimating big projects for big companies like Millennium Construction, Yonkers Construction, Worth Construction, and I even estimated a job with Holt, who we now employ. Uh, so I've been out there doing estimations uh, for many years. <clears throat> I have never in my life seen anybody miss an estimation in a major discipline on a project by 50%, no less 100%. 
this is incredibly outrageous that anybody could be so far off on, on an estimation that is so easily attainable. And then we have to ask ourselves, why? Why is he off by 100%? Well, it goes back to a term that I've used quite a bit lately, result-oriented report. Okay? So, what a result-oriented report is, it's a report that focuses on the goal rather than the data. The data is adjusted to produce the report that is desired. So going back to when um, there was the campaign to knock down the Orange County Government Center, and uh, put up a new building. The um, uh, claim was that we could knock down the building uh, for three million or so dollars and grind it up and use that as fill. Uh, this is one of the most outrageous claims ever made. Why did they make that claim? Because they want to make the case for a new building. So they used inaccurate data. Uh, what I'm going to say is that every legislator should realize that when you get information that is this far off, we should be extremely concerned. Now, there's a long list of reasons why I think that we should be supporting this resolution. Uh, I think most of you know my position, but I, I, I also think you know, as important as my friends in the trade unions, I see the signs, jobs now, uh, you know, uh, our primary responsibility is to make sure that these tax dollars are spent properly. And essentially, that's where our focus should be. We should be concerned. And I'll add to that one more thing, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, if somebody bids a project $7.4 million, uh, yeah, you might be able to negotiate, but 10% would be a lot. So you still look at, at somewhere in the high five point something million dollars for this, which is way too much, in my opinion. Thank you. Legislator Berkman, on the objection. Thank you. As I mentioned earlier, I supported compromise for this, and I still do. But let's look at some of the facts as they've evolved recently. Our Patterson Lee reports to the oversight committees that, gee, it's not 180,000 square feet, it's 205,000 square feet, over 200,000 square feet. Why? Because they didn't count the gasket. I'm still scratching my head as to what the gasket is, by the way. But 100, square footage for a professional should be an obvious objective answer. Objective answer. You, you, you measure. You don't make this disclosure this far along into the process. That was very, very disconcerting. Walls. I voted against the study, it seems, back when... We spent money for studying just the walls. Remember, we we're going to have a study, we we're going to resolve everything, we just figured out the walls. And the conclusion was, gee, we probably don't have to knock down the walls, certainly not all of them. But the, the, this project moving forward calls for knocking down, I can't say all of them, but a whole lot of them, internal annexed. <coughs> that wasn't envisioned. Next part. We, we hired Clark Patterson Lee with the, with the understanding that we had an architect that we had conf confidence in. It was, it was excellent. The architect had experience putting new additions on, on existing Rudolph buildings, of all things. I mean, and uh, buildings were found that were very close to the size of, of, of our building here. Uh, he had a, des uh, uh, a design capacity that we all uh, approved of, at any rate. And on top of it, there was a second architectural firm, if you remember. The one that, the firm that was dealing with our, our expansion at the community college. I had confidence in them as well. Not one, two. Two architects. 
And I'll, I'll tell you, it's just part of this ongoing effort where I remember I called up one of the architects just to see if I could find out. Because you can see, folks, that you don't always get the information. I'm not even saying they're intentional withholding. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. But you don't always feel like you have all the information. So I try to go the extra mile and call up and try to go to the source to find out the information. I call up, I find out the architect's not even on the job anymore. I had to find out that he was off the job for weeks, never disclosed at a committee meeting. Not one, both of them, both of them are gone. Then we come to the oversight committee. <coughs> oversight committee, we're introduced with new architects, architects that work for CP, CPL. Okay. I don't know how many uh, legislators have had an opportunity to review the exact plans. Look, at, imperfect world, you have to swallow hard a lot of times in government, you have to get through the day, you have to move forward, but this resolution I can support because it puts the pressure on this, this architectural team. It lets us uh, evaluate whether there's a, a, a addition to this contract, whether we can move forward or not, or whether there's been a breach. I don't like talking about that in public, but I did write to every single legislator about that. Every single one. I said, let's analyze and see. Let's have our attorney sit down with, with the county attorney. Let's determine what, we, what, what our status is. Instead, that didn't happen. Instead, we find out that the, the demolition costs are double what was planned for. Well, I can understand why somebody would say runaway freight train. So I'm not saying this resolution is perfect. I'm saying I support it anyway because we have to do something. And just one last point. County Executive, I, I appreciate your invitation for us to sit down with you uh, to see if we can modify some of these arrangements and, and, uh, and okay. negotiations. So I'm almost done, right? And the negotiations. I do appreciate that. And I'll, I'll accept that. But that's not the way this is supposed to go down. We're not just supposed to turn over the keys to the county executive and then just say, gee, can we borrow the car? We're supposed to, have, we're supposed to exercise our own legislative authority, our own legislative oversight. And I think we could do a better job doing that. I think at the end of the day, I hope and pray, we'll have a job that, uh, that we can be proud of, I, I pray. Thanks, <laughs> everybody. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me first state that this was a resolution about selling to Kaufman. Many people know that I was probably one of the first people that actually ever broached the subject of selling the building. Three years ago, uh, I would be all for it. I think it does an awful lot of things, but that would have to be without the caveats that actually have been included, uh, guaranteeing that Goshen will give them the planning uh, waivers that they need. And I, I don't think that's something that we can do. Uh, having said that, I have no great purpose or love for CPL. I just think that down the road, I think that we can address some of this. And if you want to, I think that that's, that's a good thing. And, you know, Go back to the drawing board with some of this stuff. I have no problem with that at all, either. But I don't think that this is within our purview, and I think that we still have time to be able to do that. Third thing, as I get older, <coughs> I notice that my memory gets a lot worse. And I guess that's possibly what some of my colleagues are counting on. But unfortunately for them, I actually do believe that I remember correct numbers. And when I hear one of my colleagues bashing another quote-unquote professional and start talking about estimates, I'm sorry, I just can't help but going back to the same legislative floor and hearing the same colleague tell me that the renovation for that building could be done for $20 million. Emphatic. Well, lo and behold, then it became $30 million. It became $40 million comparing 
a different building that had nothing in common with the one that we're actually doing that was a library. And the only thing that it had in common was that it had roughly the same square footage. The library didn't have the HVAC system, didn't have the electrical, didn't have the offices, didn't have the plumbing, didn't have all the other things that needed, and had considerably less roofs. And it was finally $40 million. Now, unless I'm not the mathematician, but I actually have had a little bit of mathematics in my background. I believe that's twice the original number, 33% above the intermediate number. Now we're hearing people bash other people for inaccurate, yada, yada, yada. And, and, and I have no problem with that. I just, you know, just be careful of us to where we're standing and where we're throwing the stones. That's my, that's my whole point. Uh, I hope that we can do this project as cheaply as possible because unfortunately I think a lot of those ships have already sailed. And for me, it is a matter of cost control. I won't be here to see this project through, but by the same token too, I, I, I hope that we continue to keep an eye on it. I think that we, we need to. Uh, just remember one thing. When the cost was supposedly $40 million, I was the one that raised my hand and I said, I want a cap it at $45 million, which was clearly 12.5% above the cost that was being championed by the Democratic Party and the newspaper in every turn. Had it out there, it was there, it was solid, it was everything else, and it was voted down except for just a very few of us that said we would be willing to do that. So just, be, just please do me a favor, be careful when you stand there and uh, pontificate to us and tell us, you know, how everybody else is wrong, but you're right because that tower that you're standing on may not be as strong as you claim it to be. Thank you. I'd just like to say something before we go on about this because we've got two consents that came here today and we spent about an hour and we talk about no surprises, but I was surprised when I was walking down the aisle and I was hit with two consents. One of them I can understand because it was, it was discussed at Buildings Committee, which or it was discussed after the, um, the committee process, but um, I, I really want to call the question on this, but I do want to say a couple of things. You know, we voted about a year ago on the BB minus plan, 18 to three. And there was a lot of things that we didn't like about it, but we gave in, we compromised. And I think overall we came up with a pretty good plan. And, and there's gonna be certain things that, that legislators don't like about the, uh, the project. But, you know, we have to move ahead. The Village of Goshen, Mayor Roddy's out there. The Village of Goshen wants us to move ahead with this project. Councilman Ken's out there. He wants us to move ahead with this project. Office of Court Administration wants us to move ahead with this project or we could be fined millions of dollars, which we seem to forget about. The judges that I've talked to, a few of them, want to move ahead with this project. They're confident that it will be a good project. Uh, Bob Jones, when I was walking in the door, he said, when are we going to get something done? Good friend of my father's. I hope soon, Bob. I really do. You know, the bids came in higher than expected in the first phase. I'm confident the second phase will come in cheaper. Uh, one of the reasons was the indecisiveness of this legislature. A lot of bidders wanted to stay away from it because we couldn't get anything done. That's why the bids are higher. They didn't want to tie up $8 million of bonding. I talked to Todd DiOrio for a half an hour last week, and he explained there's a lot of asbestos in the building, building a lot of unknowns. But value engineering can bring those costs down. But we need to move ahead, damn it. We've got iron workers out here in this audience that want to move ahead. We've got Local 17, IBEW. A lot of us want to move ahead. The majority of people in this county want us to do something. They don't want us to put the brakes on. They absolutely don't. We're going to sit here in the and not get anything done. We can move ahead and have a positive project. John McCary gave you some examples of other county departments we're bringing into this building. These three buildings, excuse me. Real property, planning, risk management, and other departments. Damn it, the employees want a new building. They don't want to take a chance of fixing up that old building as it is, with mold issues and everything else. We could have agreements. That was said before. We could have agreements. I'm telling you, most of the people in this county want us to do something. And for God's sakes, we did it. And let's move ahead with it. On the objection, yes, Minority Leader Ekus, and then Katie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree it's dragging on. Um, but I would like to take this opportunity, no matter how the vote comes out, to thank 
uh, legislators uh, Turnbull, Sullivan, and Chemnitz for taking the time and effort to put this together. I'd like to thank our attorney, Ms. Reed, for pointing out, you know, that there possibly are conflictive things in it. Um, however, uh, I, and I would never vote for anything to slow this up in a second, but I think we've all been brought aware of the fact that CPL, like them or not, are not even close to on time at this moment. And so talking about holding things up, you know, at what point do we say, CPL, you're holding us up? We, we you know, we need to move forward. Um, and, and, you know, I thought that this would be an opportunity, this particular consent resolution, to, I think it was mentioned already, if nothing else, push CPL, get on the ball. You're not on the ball. You're not turning things over to us on time. You're not turning things over. Uh, and, you know, so actually this is, this is not, I, I don't believe anybody here believes this is a change of plan at all. Uh, I, I, Steve, you're right. Let's move forward. Let's do BB plus or BB minus or whatever you call it. But we're just having, some of us are having a uh, real disagreement with who's leading the charge and who's leading the charge is not the county exec, it's not us, it's CPL right now, and they're not leading any charge. We're finding out they're behind. And that's why, you know what, if we go ahead and we at least just put this on for today, we can perhaps hear from a few other people and what their thoughts are, and it may not pass anyway, but I mean, at least it would give an opportunity for other folks to discuss it. Because one of the things that I don't like, Steve, and I know you don't, is let's stick to the issue. The issue is, should this go on by consent or not? And we don't want to hear right. about it. Right, and I, I understand. I just want to say before Katie speaks, that it's not a time-sensitive issue, even though there'll be debate on that. Uh, this could go back to the committee. We could go into executive where this really should be discussed if we're talking about a, a contractor. We're talking about things that could we could get sued over by we're talking about up here on the stage, really, believe it or not. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't have any problem with it going back to physical services, going into executive, getting briefed by the county exec and Chris Weibrock and whoever. But I just don't feel that it has to be done today here. So, Katie? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're a tough act to follow. Um, really, what I wanted to do is bring this back full circle. What we're talking about today is a consent order. <coughs> This consent order was placed on this as I was standing here about to start the Pledge of Allegiance. It's two and a half pages long. It may have a lot of great substance, it may not. I haven't had the opportunity to read it. And I'm making things very, very simple here. How do you expect me to rule on something that's two and a half pages long, I don't know if the facts are correct, and you want me to vote on it? It is not a time-sensitive issue. However, it is a very sensitive issue. And I would like the opportunity to thoroughly review this in order to see whether it has any substance and any merit. It may be great. I may agree with it at one point. But I can't tell you that now. And I know I'm making this very, very simple. But everybody's taken the opportunity to give their political stand here this afternoon, and that's not what we're talking about. Yes, we need to move forward. But if you want me to digest a resolution that's two and a half pages, at least give it to me in the night before. Thank you. Okay, Myrna and Melissa, final comments. Um, I also want to You've already spoken twice. I, I have a couple of You've already spoken twice. Courts putting You've already on. spoken twice. Myrna? I'll, I'll be very brief, uh, because Chris Ekes, I think, was eloquent in saying what I wanted to say, just using different words. So I want to thank you very much, Chris, for having said it, and I can't be any more brief, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just, uh, just for me, one person sitting up here, and I want to make a statement, you know, for my colleagues and for my caucus. Um, but, you know, to speak to whether or not to put it on the agenda, first of all, I, I agree with Steve that there was merit to the first one we discussed, although, you know, we voted and it didn't pass. This one, you know, we talk about consents oftentimes, those of us who support it, oftentimes it's because it's time sensitive. This is not time sensitive. And personally, I don't care what verbs we change in the resolve, it's still, it doesn't need to go on today as consent. My second concern is that council, our council, has just told us that she has a concern that we're voting on something that 
really is not in, in our purview to do. So that's another reason why I won't be supporting it. And, and I just wanted to touch on something that the chairman said. Um, I see a runaway train on this issue. I agree. But what I see it as is, is we've been discussing this issue for three and a half years, and I'm not saying discussion isn't good. And yes, several of us have had different ideas on what we should do with the government center, and we've all communicated that on the record with one another. But the problem has always been we can, can't get 14 people to support one idea. And then it happened. We had 18 people support the BB plan. And the runaway train, in my opinion, is that we are still debating it today. We passed it. We passed it. We passed the bonding. And I, I respect every one of my colleagues. I don't care whether it's by consent and having the discussion, or if it's in committee, or if it's out in the hallway. I respect all of the opinions. But the runaway train is that we are still talking about this issue. And I personally will not be supporting the consent today. It is not necessary to do here, as Katie said, two and a half pages, you know, to direct the county executive or to urge the county executive to um, terminate the contract with CPL. I'm not willing to do that in the 11th hour. I, and I don't think that's fair to CPL either. I think we need to talk about this, but this is not the forum in the 11th hour to do. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Jim, you're going to abstain again? Okay. Roll call. Yes vote is to put it on, and no vote is to not put it on. Honestly? No. Ekis? Yes. Amo? No. Anagostakis? Yes. Benton? No. Berkman? Yes. Benelli? No. Cheney? No. Dillard? No. DeSalvo? No. Hines? No. Pemmins? Yes. Kulasek? Paduk? Yes. Ruskevich? No. Simmons? No. Sullivan? Yes. Turnbull? No. Bureau? No. Wong? No. Gresham? No. Seven eyes, 13 no's, one abstention. Okay, now the agenda. A, we have the communications. And. Resolution number one. Legislators Ekis, Ruskevich, Simmons, and Wong. Resolution extending the period of time for the appointment of James P. Burpo to serve as Acting Commissioner of the Department of Information Technology for Orange County by the County Executive pursuant to Section 3.07 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. You want to be added? Okay. Melissa wants to be added. Chairman, yes. just very quickly, I want to say we couldn't do uh, any better than Jim Burpo. He's got my full support, and I'm proud to have uh, actually been one of the sponsors. Thank you. Ditto that from here. You want to be on? You want to say something? Yeah. Uh, Tony, hello. I don't want to be on. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Pekas? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Padu, Kraskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vera Wong, and Brescia. 21 ayes. A resolution number two. Legislators Cheney, Benton, Sullivan, Padu. Resolution extending the period of time for the appointment of Christopher R. Vibrock to serve as Acting Commissioner of the Department of Public Works for Orange County by the County Executive, pursuant to Section 3.07 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yep. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Diller? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turner? <coughs> Vera? Wong? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay. Resolution number three, bond resolution requiring two-thirds vote. Legislators Cheney, Vero, Benton, Hines. Bond resolution dated March 5, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the acquisition of building equipment for the Department of Public Works, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 100000 appropriating the set amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 100000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Roll call. Honestly? Ekis, yes. Amo, 
Anaknostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Kemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Bureau, Wong, Brescia. 19 eyes, two nose. <coughs> yes, your name's, you want it off the sponsor, right? Okay. Lee, you have a question? Yeah, just, just a technical question. In the verbiage uh, in committee, it's for a building equipment replacement. Uh, here it says acquisition of building equipment. and left out the word replacement. Does that make a difference, Antoinette? We'll add that language in if, it, if the uh, bond council deems necessary. Thank you. Okay. Resolution number four. Legislators Benton. Mr. Turnbull, you want it to be taken off of this one? Number four, you want to be taken off, Matt? Yeah, four. Yeah, okay, not a problem. Okay, legislators Benton and Benelli. Bond resolution dated March 5th, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing partial reconstruction of various county roads, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $1,300,000, appropriating set amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,300,000 bonds of the county to pay the cost thereof. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Bureau? Wong? And Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, resolution number six, five. What am I on? Five. Five. Two thirds votes required. Sorry. Legislators Paduk, Cheney, Benton, Berkman. On resolution dated March 5th, 2015. On resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing public <coughs> replacement countywide, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 200000 appropriating said amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of 200000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yeah. Ekis, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, no. Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, and Brescia. 20 ayes, one no. Okay, resolution six, also a bond resolution, two thirds. Legislators Paduk, Cheney, Benton, Turnbull. Bond resolution dated March 5, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing paving of various county park facilities, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 150,000. Appropriating set amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of 150,000 bonds of the county to pay the cost thereof. Second. Question? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amo? Yeah. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard, DeSalvo, e. Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, and Brescia. 20 eyes, one no. Resolution number seven, bond resolution also. Legislators Turnbull, Ruskevich, Benton, Kulisek. Bond resolution dated March 5th, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing acquisition of various equipment for county park facilities, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 100,000, appropriating said amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of 100,000 bonds of the county to pay the cost thereof. Second. Discussion, Minority Leader Ekes. <coughs> Thank you. Um, in the physical services meeting when this was brought up, I happened to have been present and uh, I asked a question and I assumed I was going to get an answer. And uh, I have received no answer yet. And the question I asked, just to remind people and to inform people who are not there, is since this is the purchase of two trucks, one for 40000 one for 60000 for the Department of Parks, could we not use the FEMA money that's coming in to purchase <coughs> these trucks? 
The FEMA money uh, I asked, uh, and I hope you all received today, uh, I believe it was today, how the FEMA money is supposedly designated. There's 11 trucks on there. There's three portable uh, traffic signals on there, and then $1.5 million for uh, uh, updating, upgrading of uh, the E911 center. And I'm certainly not going after those, but uh, I would think that one of the trucks, I mean, they're getting like two sanders, four of something else types of trucks and so on like that. And to date, personally, just myself, I've not been sold that somebody didn't go Christmas shopping with our FEMA money. Uh, I have not made every physical services committee meeting, but nobody's ever come in and said, look, this is what we're replacing this with. It's, you know, uh, <coughs> let's say in 1990, I know there are a couple trucks, big tandem trucks that we have that are 1990 and probably need replacing. But the point is, nobody has come back with my with the answer to my question about are those more important at this moment in time to the purchase of these two trucks? And if not, then why don't we use some of that money for there? With all that being said, I would like to table this for one month in hopes of getting an answer from the county executive's second. office. Is there a second? No, oh, oh, second. I'm sorry, Mike. A discussion? Katie. No, table for table one month you can discuss, can we not? Indefinitely is what you can't discuss. I, I'm not objecting to the table, however, um, and I have no problem with that personally. However, it was mentioned that um, the items that we're talking about for parts is substantially is substantially lower in cost than the things that were um, part of the FEMA list, shall we call it? And that list, I think, was provided. Uh, at least I received it by email shortly after the physical services committee and there's something that came through today quite frankly i didn't see it uh, so i felt that it was satisfied and that your question was asked if that not be the case then i wish i had known because i would have tried to get something by today but here again that's, i don't have a problem with tabling it but i believe it was answered because the types of trucks we're talking about are two distinct types of individual in types of trucks okay it's not if it's not time sensitive it, i'm just going to take a all in favor of sending it back to the committee for one month? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done. Okay. Okay. Let's try to get those answers and maybe we can do what he desires or what Chris desires. Okay. Uh, resolution number eight. Legislators Rescavit and Turbo. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature giving notice of intent to assume lead agency status under State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker with respect to the Orange County Emergency Services Building Solar Array and making a preliminary determination that this project will be classified as an unlisted action. Sorry. Discussion? Uh, yeah, my name, yes, Jeff, you want to speak? Yeah. Okay. This is a, a step forward for the environment, so I'm not going to be opposed to it. I'm going to be supportive of it. Uh, you know I have kind of a tough record when it comes to secret, but it seems to be minimally, minimally, minim, minimally, uh, one of those words, uh, impact on the environment <coughs> and stuff. But I would just like to bring attention to page 10. It mentions there's a, a potential contamination history. There's been a reported spill at the proposed project. Uh, check yes. I just for the record, wanted to know I I'm going to let you guys know I'm still reading this stuff, and uh, and we should find out precisely what that's about. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody know? Close. That's on page 10 at the end. It says spill closed. 0501 2007. So, whatever that remediation issue was, it has been remediated and concluded. Whatever. whatever it was. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek? Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Banton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk, Rishkevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, Gresham, 21 eyes. Okay, resolution number nine. 
Legislators Ekis and Berkman, resolution authorizing the county executive to accept the gift of funds on behalf of the County of Orange for use by the Orange County Community College pursuant to section 215 of the county law. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasa? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Riskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, Brescia. 21 ayes. Resolution number 10. Legislators Ekis and Riskevich. Resolution authorizing a contract to be made with the Faculty <coughs> Association of Orange County Community College pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law known as the Public Employees Fair Employment Act. Discussion? Roll call. Bonastek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo, Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Riskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Gresham. 20 ayes, 1 no. Resolution number 11. Legislators Ekis and Ruskevich, resolution authorizing a contract to be made with the Staff and Chairman's Association of Orange County Community College pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law known as the Public Employees Fair Employment Act. Discussion? Roll call. Curly wants his name added. Yes. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? <coughs> Benelli? Cheney? Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, no. Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, <coughs> Wong, Brescia. 20 ayes, 1 no. Okay, resolution number 12. Legislators Ekis, Wong, Cheney, and Sullivan. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reclassify one senior clerk to associate clerk at the Orange County Community College pursuant to section 2.02I of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek, Ekis, yes. Amo, Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Pulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, resolution number 13. Legislators Simmons, Sullivan, Bureau, Chemnitz. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reclassify one community health outreach worker part time to community health outreach worker Spanish English speaking part time at the Orange County Department of Health pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Yes. You want to be added? Paul, you want to be added? Curly, too? Okay. And Shannon? Absolutely. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Nagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Badu? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Wong? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, resolution number 14. Legislator Cheney? Or for that? But oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Jumping the gun. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Legislators Ekis, Ruskevich, Wong, Berkman, Bonasek. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature regarding the removal of PCBs from the Hudson River. Okay, Legislator Cheney. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at this time, I would like to uh, ask my colleagues to uh, join with me in tabling this motion until... Um, we're allowed to bring it back to committee. I feel that uh, there are some areas of it that need to be reworked, um, and uh, I could get into more details about that, but uh, um, I, I just suggest that uh, we could, uh, with time, um, have the opportunity to, to make it a better resolution. I'll second that. Okay. And I would just like to take the opportunity, since she was here today, to thank Althea for bringing in the information and speaking for this. And uh, I would also like uh, Mr. Cheney to uh, thank him for uh, suggesting that we get together and work on this to make it more pliable. 
Okay, all in favor. Just Gary? Uh, yeah, I would also like to thank the representative who came today because uh, it did provide me with uh, additional insight uh, that I think will be uh, become a part of the, the, the resolution that we present. There's no time limit on this, is there? No. Anytime. But, you know, hopefully in a month, we can tweak it a little bit and make it more amenable to some legislators. All right, but hopefully we can bring it back a little bit too. Okay. All in favor of doing that? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, resolution number 15. I just say it was Chemnitz and Hines. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Department of Planning to submit an application to the New York State Department of Transportation for federal grant monies pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Okay. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Padue, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vera, Wong, Gresham. 21 eyes. Okay, resolution 16. <coughs> Legislators Chemnitz and Hines. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Planning to accept and appropriate New York State Department of Transportation federal 5311 funds pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Padue? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Wong? Brescia? 21 eyes. A resolution number 17, two, bond resolution two thirds vote. Legislators Ekis, Benton, Benelli, bond resolution dated March 5th, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing acquisition and installation of computer hardware and software for the Department of Information Technology, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 1,600,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 1,600,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Wong? Brescia? 20 ayes, 1 no. Okay, resolution number 18, also bond resolution. Legislators Paduk, Ekes, Benton, and Hines. Bond resolution dated March 5, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing acquisition of equipment for the Division of Emergency Communications, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $1,500,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,500,000 bonds of the County to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my understanding is that this uh, money is going to be um, replaced from FEMA. Is that accurate? Not necessarily. Paul, you, can you speak to that? It, uh, it is on the uh, alternate project list to be approved by FEMA, but uh, we are at the bid right now for this piece of equipment. We don't know what the value of that is. Thank you, Walt. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Wong, Russia. 21 eyes. Okay, resolution number 19.
Legislators Paduke, Ekes, Sullivan, Vero, and Simmons. Resolution authorizing a contract to be made between the County of Orange, the Sheriff of Orange County, and the Orange County Correction Officers Benevolent Association in relation to terms and conditions of employment pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law known as the Public Employees Fair Employment Act. Discussion? Yes, Legislator Perkins. You want to be added? I just want to say, I want to thank Commissioner Gross for helping negotiate these contracts and explaining them to the legislators. He and his team worked diligently on them, and uh, I think they were very fair for both sides. Uh, hopefully other unions will follow suit. Roll call. Honestly? Yes. Ekes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Banton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Padu, Braskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Bureau, Wong, and Brescia. 21 ayes. Resolution number 20. Legislators Bonasek, Padu, Cheney, Wong. An act to establish a new salary schedule therein applicable to all employees of the County of Orange who are included in the negotiating unit represented by the Orange County Correction Officers Benevolent Association. Okay. Jeff wants to be added. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Kemenitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Braskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vera? Wong? And Brescia? 21 eyes. Yes, A21 receive and file. Uh, local law number 21. Legislators Bonasek Hines, Local Law Introductory Number 1 of 2015, a local law to authorize the sale and use of sparkling devices. Discussion? Legislator Paduk? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just uh, I made some comments in committee regarding this. You know, this is going to be taken off the, uh, the Orange County Legislature finds this new law allows sparkling device to be sold and used in municipalities that affirmatively <coughs> enact a local law authorizing the ex exclusion sparkling devices from the definition of fireworks and dangerous fireworks. Now you're going to be able to sell them to 18-year-olds who have, uh, or watching their three-year-old maybe. You know, I have a lot of concerns about this being taken off a dangerous list of, of fireworks. Um, I voted against it in committee, and I'll just say I was a little concerned when, when the gentleman who spoke said that more states that have approved this legislation, accidents have been reduced. That seems awful odd to me if a lot more people are using them, that there's a lot less accidents. So I didn't support it in the committee. Uh, committee I'm not going to support it here. And uh, I just hope everybody realizes that fireworks can be pretty dangerous, whether they're on a wooden stick or a metal stick, if they're in the hands of a three-year-old. And now we're going to allow 18-year-olds to buy them instead of whomever buying them and, and having oversight when someone is using them. So that's why I'm voting. Legislator Sullivan. Um, I, I would just like to say I, I really don't have a problem with the sparklers, um, and I'm happy that there is an age limit on it. Um, I'm just concerned about um, students bringing them to school. So I'm, I'm wondering if there's any way we could put a limit on the distance from school property as to where they can be sold. Um, I, I don't, yes, <coughs> do I answer that, Vince? I'm sorry. There already is a state law. Uh, it's a local law. Yeah. It's a state law that they're not allowed on uh, school grounds. They're not allowed on not school allowed grounds. Not allowed on school grounds is different than a store being right next door to a school building and selling them. That's I know that I know that we're able to do that with, for instance, the advertisements of cigarettes. Um, so why not? Um, is there is no limit as to how close to a school building it can be sold, correct? Uh, in NFPA 1124, I believe it does provide for uh, schools and churches. I, I can't NFA, NFPA 24 11, allows for schools and churches? 1124. 1124, excuse me. Allows for distance? Yes. Okay. I can't, uh, Do you have any idea? On what it is, but. He doesn't know what idea, but what distance it is. Right. Okay. Okay, any other discussion? Yes, point of order. Right, if we wanted to change it. And it was introduced as time sensitive. Time sensitive because it takes the, th the lead time is about three months. And the, and the selling season is only about a month and at Christmas time. So, okay. Question? Well, yes. Um, so it's not time sensitive. It is time sensitive. Why? Why? 
because it's a three three month lead time to order all the product from China. Correct? Legislator Hines. <laughs> okay, legislators, please, so we can hear. Yes, I uh, just want to thank the gentleman who presented in committee and here today. I fully support this. We're not talking about uh, explosive devices here. We're talking about champagne poppers and uh, uh, they call them snappers. And uh, I, I had uh, sparklers in my hand as a kid and I, I never got hurt with them. I guess the most dangerous part of them would be the metal stick or something. Maybe that's what uh, maybe me, made me commit my life to the fire service. I don't know. But I, I think uh, this is going to be fun for the kids. If it's going to create jobs, as the gentleman pointed out, uh, this is minor stuff. This is not bottle rockets. It's not firecrackers. It's not explosive devices that uh, other states sell. So this, this is an easy one. Thanks. Yeah, I concur with you, Kevin. I mean, I used to buy those little champagne things and the five and dime and the little, the little poppers. And look what it did to me. And you and Melissa aren't that much younger than me either, so. <laughs> okay, who else? Uh, Michael, you wanted to say something? Yes, Mr. Chairman, just a quick note. I don't hear it mentioned. I'm not on uh, public safety, but I did hear the presentation at NISAC this year and when the people who came forward and talked about it. I think the one thing, in addition to jobs, is that by us improving it, we allow local municipalities to allow it. If we don't, they can't. And I believe also there's a piece in there that the people who would sell them may very well be volunteer organizations that are going to make some money on it. So as we do this, we may be helping our local volunteer organizations in terms of this thing, whether it's school funds. Or, so I think we got to think about how we're going to help them. And if we don't do it, no one can do it. Okay. Uh, Legislator next, stop us. All right, calm Thank down, you guys. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm just a little um, perplexed why uh, why the law would only have the purchase between June 1st and July 5th, December 26th, January 2nd. Um, I did speak to the individual. That's the way it's crafted, evidently, because um, that's the way they could finally get the support from uh, Governor Cuomo to move forward with this. If it's, uh, I'm concerned with that for multiple reasons. If it's not a problem to sell these, um, why shouldn't it be sold all year round? Um, why shouldn't other uh, people or groups of people that celebrate uh, holidays or events at different times of the year not be able to, to purchase these items? Um, why did it have to be so restricted to get approval from higher authorities? And if we're interested in getting people to be able to sell to make money, it would seem that you'd want to sell all year round, just not a, a short time period. So all those things concern me. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Anasa? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Yes. Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? No. Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? No. Vero? Yes. Wong? Brescia? 18 ayes, 3 noes. Okay, I'd like to just have a moment of silence. Uh, I just received word that Cardinal Egan passed away at 82. Thank you. Resolution number 22. Legislators Hines, Bonasek, Ekis, Paduk, Simmons, Vero. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the New York State Department of Criminal Justice Services. I'm sorry. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County District Attorney's Office to accept grant funds from the New York State Department of Criminal Justice Services pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Roll call. You want to be added? Yes, Jim. Salva. Shannon, too? Okay. Jim DeSalvo. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Braskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vera? Wong? Brescia? 21 eyes. And resolution number 23.
legislators Paduk and Simmons, resolution endorsing and authorizing an E911 pilot project for the implementation of an automatic vehicle location AVL system for emergency medical services in the town of Wolf Hill. Second. Discussion? Uh, legislator, or my majority leader, Bonasek? Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> I, I want to do that. I can yell that for a minute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, I'd like my name, Anna, please. First yes. request. Um, I know that uh, Supervisor DePue stood up prior to session starting to speak to this issue, and um, he had some people to thank um, for their work on this. And, and I just want to thank Dan DePue, um, because I know you have spearheaded this, and you put a lot of time, as well as your board and your town. Um, I just wanted to say, for those who were not at the public safety meeting, the last, the last meeting we had and we discussed this, uh, during the meeting, there, I think there was some confusion about certain information. Um, and the meeting ended with the understanding, I thought, with the legislature, is that those parties involved to move this forward were going to meet. Um, and I'm happy to hear what you announced about mobile life today. So I, I, do, um, I do want to just mention that to anybody who hadn't been at the public safety, that there was a willingness um, I know Walt Corey was there, uh, Dan DePue, and others, and I think IT was brought up in that as well. So I um, just wanted to put that on the record, that this seems to me to be moving forward, and that we all have to be on the same page before you know that does come to a vote. But thank you, Dan. Thank you. Uh, Minority Leader Ekus. Thank you. Uh, I do love using Dan as the uh, guinea pig. Um, no, <laughs> just kidding. Um, what it really does is it reminds me of the days when you were here with us and you were very passionate, you were excellent. Um, we actually still have some things in the past that you had brought up that we need to still address. But anyway, on behalf of the emergency services and, and, and all, I think you framed it correctly. This is going to be correct for Wall Kill. Who knows whether it'll be correct for the rest of the county. But I thank you very much for taking that step out, negotiating with Mobile Life, with your volunteers and I wish you the best of luck with this. Legislator Hines. Yeah, I'll echo what Mr. Ekis said. Uh, Dan, very impressed uh, by this uh, resolution. Uh, the whole committee uh, wanted to do a resolution. Really, this is a resolution to ourselves to say, uh, make sure we support Dan in doing it. The, the committee sort of said it. When it was first brought up, I said, we're doing a resolution to support this, to tell ourselves that we're supporting it. And they said, yeah, because we want to make sure that the parties continue to work together to support Dan in this. And in committee, uh, Dan had suggested that uh, this would probably be a, a, not only a pilot project, but would be contagious throughout Orange County. I think within the next maybe 10, 15 years, this will be contagious in the whole United States of America because it really does enhance safety. You know, when you talk about someone having a heart attack, and we're talking about advanced life support here, uh, seconds matter, minutes certainly matter. Uh, so this is going to... I think save lives once uh, all the kinks are worked out of it. And uh, to show how aggressive Mobile Life was, when we asked them in committee, the CEO of Mobile Life was there. And we said, if your transmitters don't communicate with the 911 center, are you prepared to spend money? And he said, not right now. And in that one or two weeks' time, Dan was able to come here today and say it didn't work, and Mobile Life was willing to spend the money to. Uh, help the people of ultimately Orange County. Not only, uh, granted, they might make a few bucks off this because they may get a few more calls, but it's really about public safety and saving lives. So congratulations, Dan. I hope it works for you, and I hope it spreads throughout the county and America. Okay. I, too, uh, commend uh, Supervisor DePue. As having been a former public safety chairman, he knows all about public safety and, more important, saving lives, and that's what this resolution intends to do. And I thank you for bringing that forward and doing a lot of homework on it as well. And I thank you for sitting still, because I know you don't sit still for that long period of time, but Sweden must be rubbing off on you out there, I think. So, roll call. No, can nope. I? I'm sorry. Roseanne and then Katie. Can you place my name on this, please? Yes, absolutely. Katie and... Chairman, despite Mr. DePue's involvement in this particular resolution and in jest, I would love to have my name added to this. And congratulations, Dan, in all seriousness. And it's good to see you again. Thank you. Okay. Jeff? Yeah. Uh, I don't serve on the Public Safety Committee, so uh, I was banking on Mr. DePue's comments to me much earlier in the game, several months ago. Uh, and Mr. Hines' comments from last night, I had a 
conversation with him to try to get the details so that I could um, be ready to vote today. So I certainly uh, endorse a pilot program to see if you can make improvements. Uh, it doesn't have a direct relationship, I believe, on my community, but I wish you good luck in communicating this concept if it works in your town with others. Uh, the only other point is it does not specify when in your resolve of when you're going to report back, but uh, I'll just assume that uh, it'll be sooner rather than later since you hear some news. Thank you. Hopefully we'll have happy babies in Middletown and Walk Hill. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I'm sorry. Who is up next over? Dennis? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I thought this was a no-brainer, and I, I told Dan that, and I commend him for bringing it forward. Uh, I believe I was the one that made the motion to actually have the resolution, and I think that that was because so many of us on the committee were kind of surprised that it hadn't gone further than what we thought it had. And uh, I, I commend Dan for doing this. I think it is a trendsetter. I think it would be a state-of-the-art system. I, commend, I thought it was a new brain, no-brainer because uh, the people involved were willing to step forward and absorb the costs, and the people in the community wanted it. So, you know, why wouldn't we support something like this? I think that that's, that's something that we should do. And if other communities don't want to go, go forward with it, then they also have that same uh, opportunity. You know, they don't have to sign on. But again, Dan, I commend you for actually taking care of business. And uh, I think, again, this, like Kevin said, I think that this, you'll see this as a state-of-the-art system that actually will spread to the rest of the country. And uh, Orange County, again, will be a trendsetter. So thank you. Okay, hey, Legislator Magnostakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Please add uh, my name to the resolution also. And uh, I was going to thank Mr. DePew um, for all his hard work. And I think he is a visionary, and I concur with my other colleagues. This is definitely going to spread not only to Orange County, but across the country. Thank you, Dan, for everything you've done. Nice to see you again. Legislator Stavo. Well, Dan, I think you've heard from everybody up here, so I figured I'd jump on the bandwagon. Uh, no, very good idea. I have the fortune to sit on public safety, and I've known Dan for many years. Um, I, I really look forward to seeing how this unfolds, and I commend you for bringing it forward. I'd like to have my name added onto it, even though Highlands is at the other end of the county. We're going to be watching. By all means. Okay. Roll call. Anasik? Yes. Ikis? Yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, yes. Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, <coughs> Duke, Briskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Brescia. 20 ayes, 1 absent. Okay. Resolution number 24. Legislator Benton, resolution authorizing the private sale and conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from a tax sale to Orange County, pursuant to section 10184 of the Real Property Tax Law and Orange County amended local law number two of 2010. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnistakis? No. Benton? Berkman? Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, oh. Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Briskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Brescia. 18 ayes, two noes, and one absent. Okay, if there's no objections, we can combine 25, 26, 27, and 28. Any objections? So funny. <laughs> okay. Right? 25 through 28. Or can we just do? Okay. Yeah. 25 through 28. You need to read anything, Gene, or no? Roll call. Okay, roll call. Bonasek, yes. Ikis, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Dirkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, 
Padu Prescovich, Simon Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, Brescia, 20 ayes, one absent. Okay, Fred. Right. No? Okay. 19 okay. ayes, two absent. Same from the previous number, 24. Okay, well, uh, 29, numbers 29 through 33. Second. Second by JB. <coughs> yeah, the 29 through 33. Monasek, Ekis, Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, absent, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, absent, Brescia. 19 eyes, two absent. Okay, before we go to public portion on non-agenda items, I would just like to say thank you to Legislator De Simmons. This is his last meeting. I will certainly miss his tenacity, um, his the way he did his homework, uh, his sick sense of humor at times, um, but his, his, his knowledge, basically, and his leadership ability in the legislature. And I, I for one, am certainly going to miss him. And um, Judge Shortino, would you make sure that he behaves when he gets over to your side? No doubt. No doubt, okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, you're right, your prayers have been answered. Uh, I actually checked with some people. I, I get it on good authority, though, and it was a little bit disconcerting to find out that many of those prayers were actually from this legislature in Polish, Italian, Greek, and uh, Mr. Hebrew. That's right, British, yeah. I also understand that there was a uh, prayer chain that was initiated by the DNC, so that, that, that's, you know. But seriously, it was my, it's my honor to actually have been able to be here with you and to, uh, and Ms. Wong's is Chinese. So. <laughs> but it was to represent Deer Park, Mount Hope, and Port Jervis. It was truly an honor to, to actually sit here on the, on the dais with you. Uh, I would like to commend Mr. Ekus for the statement that he made earlier. And I urge each and every one of you to stand firm. The statement was very important. Uh, I think that was the epitome of cowardice. You know me, I was never lost for words and when I, I feel something, I say it. And each and every one of you need to stand strong to protect each other, no matter which side of the aisle those types of atrocities actually occur to. Unforgivable. Uh, I also would ask that uh, somebody pick up my mantle of objecting to the consents. Uh, I, I believe that they should be granted. I, I, I believe they should be granted when they're appropriate and not granted when they're not. But seriously, I, I consider each and every one of you a friend. Uh, it's been my pleasure to serve with you. We haven't always agreed on, on different things, but hopefully I was forthright with you and honest in my approach to both you and the issues. And uh, having said that, that you're all my friends, I'll remind you that jury uh, duty is a civic duty, so don't be calling me. <laughs> But seriously, I, I do want to wish you all Godspeed and, and, and say God bless you all. And I, and I mean that sincerely. Thank you. Thank you again, Mr. Jeff, you want to say something? Friend Dem Dennis, I will miss you. I have no clue why. <laughs> Except for maybe your sarcasm, you know? No, I, uh, I enjoyed meeting you, working with you, and I am your friend, and you're my friend, and I wish you the best of luck, and I will call you on jury duty. <laughs> and, uh, I also have, uh, on a more somber note, uh, a friend of mine, Margaret Jean Simpson, Simpson from Middletown, passed away. I went to her funeral. She was a great lady, uh, very active with the nursing program at the community college, and uh, also with the Middletown Historical Society, so I just wanted to take the time. Remember One moment of silence. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, we'll go right. Yes, we're going to go. I just wanted to um, say I 
anyone misplace a uh, a white phone? A Samsung phone in the ladies' room. Galaxy. <laughs> oh, is it Antoinette's? Yeah. No. Nobody misplaced. Is Samsung four or five? I said the lady. The lady. <laughs> <laughs> It, does, it doesn't stop, Roseanne. They're busting my chops over here. So nothing's changed. It'll, it'll continue on. <laughs> okay. On that note, I am going to miss you, Dennis. I don't care Thank you, Roseanne. Okay, first speaker is John John Monroe. I'm going to give you a minute, three minutes and 30 seconds because I've let the pew have that long, too, okay? And the speakers. I've got to go to the restroom, but Melissa, you chair the meeting while I'm... I don't know if she knows that or not. It's not the rules chairman. It's the majority leader. So John's going to speak. I'll be right back. You chair the meeting. Just for a few minutes. Okay. I want to sit in your seat. I have to remember not to take my water pills before I come here. Uh, you know, I've been listening to you talking about the uh, your, your government building. You know, this has been going on for over three years. And every time you think you've got a result, somebody comes up with another zing in it. And all you do is go on and on and on. And the way we're going, I'm going, to, I'm going to be too old. I won't be able to come to these meetings anymore before you get a result. But uh, I'm talk, I'd like to talk about the uh, government center. As the, even the best architect made a mistake. In this case, Paul Rudolph's mistake was the Orange County Government Center. Are we are paying, now we're paying the price of correct. Uh, Gene Taubman proposed buying the government center for $5 million. And he's going to put 80 artist studios, a conference center, meeting rooms, living areas, for $14,500,000. This includes his making minor, minor renovations. It is generally conceded he will not be able to do this and bring the building up to code for that amount. Uh, he, will, he still has to have the zoning upgraded upgrade change to residential and he just he, for all the modifications he's going to have to make he's going to have to redo the elevator he's going to have to make it uh handicap accessible uh and he's going to have to repair the windows repair the roofs he's not going to be able to do anything with 14 million dollars that's a drop of the bucket clark patterson has proposed renovating the government center for 67.7 million and produce say 200,000 plus square foot of space or bringing the building up to code. The county will have adequate space for serious agencies. The county will own the government center and retain the county as core facility. There will be no cost of new parking facilities or landscaping as you, as, as you would get with new construction, because nobody seems to be mentioning what's going to happen if we build a new building over in the parking lot, and the, all the landscaping is going to be around it. Uh, Peter and Company, who is a Kaufman contractor, proposes building a smaller, more compact, hopefully a more efficient government center for 65, almost $66 million, and will produce 139,000 square feet. This includes 33,000 square feet in the courthouse. You know, this is no bargain. He also has an alternative proposal to build a new building, less the court facility for $47 million, and will provide 106,000 square feet. Calvin Platt hopes to sell the court facility back to the county, price unknown, and it would be applied against his deposit of $5 million. He's going to reduce his payment by that much. Uh, Jakovitz and Gavitz estimates the cost of a new government center to be in the area of $47 million. The space of the court facility would be 139,463 square feet and 106,000 square feet without the court facility. Uh, Clark Patterson, between Clark Patterson and Peter and Company, we're talking about $1.8 million uh, savings in cost. But you're giving up $61,000 in space. And that comes out to about $28.40 per square foot. That space is costing. Uh, and then besides that, Calvin's $27 million is going to go down the tubes. You'll never see it. One can only conclude renovating the government center would be the best option. The county would have 61,037 square feet more than Calpin's proposes for $1.8 million. 
or $28.40 a square feet. Remember, Peter and company, who is Kaufman's uh, architect, stated that the proposal, none of these courts are set in stone and could increase contribution as could increase as, as conditions change. And this is what it is. You've been laying on, sitting on this thing for all this time, and all you've been doing is spending, you spent 50, approximately $15 million so far. You haven't really got anything done. And you're, it, it, it's, when are you going to sit down and do something? All you, I'm, I'm just going to recommend you, uh, uh, your membership in the Procrastinators Club. Uh, then they come back to Kaufman's building. John, are you? His building is it? We're uh, getting close to four minutes now. Oh, uh, just give me one second. It, uh, okay. I, I'm not sending you a package. You can read all about it. Okay. Uh, he, Kaufman's building is a disaster. It's the worst design you can possibly find. And if the people would sit down and analyze it, they know what they're looking at, they would see that. It's, it's a complete waste of space. It's a, it's a, the building, I, I used to make a living at this, the same as Mr. Crumble. And I don't happen to agree with it. But uh, that building is a disaster. And if you, build, if you ever give that contract to build a building like that, the biggest mistake you ever make in your life. Okay, John, can you submit the, okay. Yeah, yeah I, gave, I gave it to, uh, the, and I, I sent you a copy too. Yep. Okay, thanks, John. Good. Yeah. I didn't read the whole thing. I skimmed through it a little bit, but I, I like what I read. Okay, thanks, John. Mike Gatos isn't here anymore, so he's uh, Marianne McDonough, Otisville, Orange County Government Center. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I brought you to go down memory lane a little bit, just so that you know that what you voted on uh, to spend $74 million for the renovated government center. Back in 2012, I brought you the article. Diana had pushed for a new government center, and it was for $75 million, and you didn't pass that. But you're willing to spend $74 million in an effort to revamp the current one. In conjunction with that, I'd like to speak to how there is a very big connection between Valley View and this Orange County Government Center. And one of the connections I found very recently is regarding your inability and the county executive's inability, former and present, uh, to deal with ending contracts that aren't in your best interest. Uh, and what I'd like to speak to is how CPL is not in your best interest, obviously from what I've heard here today. And if you'll recall, the Bill Pascicello and the boys from OAS, that contract wasn't in your best interest either. Many members of this legislature did not want to fire Pascicello and end that contract. Uh, he was intentionally, as came out in the uh, Valley View Investigative Committee, sabotaging the finances at Valley View. Finally, after almost destruction of Valley View at um, Pascicello and company was let go, and their contract not renewed. Miraculously, look where Valley View is today compared to under the leadership of Bill Pascicello. Now, if only Bill Pascicello and the boys had been able to retain Valley View for a little longer, the ultimate selling plan for Valley View might have been pulled off. Here we have the same going on. Well, you legislators, I guess you don't because we didn't get to bring this even to bring it up on the agenda today have the intestinal fortitude this time around to unload CPL. You couldn't unload Pascicello in a timely manner. Will you be able to unload a CPL? It took the likes of the Roxanne Donnery Valley View Investigative Committee to get rid of Pascicello. There was already an investigative committee for the Orange County Government Center. We don't have time for a second one, but unfortunately, the fix it rather than replace it strategy has now moved, morphed into a destruction of the building, which was what was wanted for, to begin with. Please look back to 2012. In the process of destroying this building, many millions of our taxpayer dollars, not yours, ours, have been wasted. And I do agree with the gentleman ahead of me that they've been wasted. We've spent them on Fusco to begin with, another firm from Binghamton, and now on CPL. I ask you to please stop the insanity. What you all do here is feed the top <coughs> feeders. Stop spending excessive dollars on this government center that needed to be just cleaned and uh, maintained. You 
you have not been, you have been on the wrong side of this, and once you get your way on this and spend all this money needlessly, the first thing you will then be doing is looking to sell value view. And why? Because you don't have enough money to run this county. It's all connected. Valley View and the government center. Some of us know what that connection is, and you should consider yourself exposed. And what you need to do is to reassess who you work for. Let me remind you, you work for the people, the taxpayers. They elected you and they paid your salary. You do not work for the county executive, either this one or the previous one, and you do not work for the political machine that contributes to your campaigns. Thank you. Uh, Michael Sussman next. Uh, he's not here. William Seaton, Spring Street, Goshen, on the Government Center. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We got a chance to say a few words, and I would like to speak on behalf of the uh, Kaufman plan. Uh, I lived in Goshen for uh, 25 years. Uh, people who are in Goshen see me and my wife out walking in the streets just about every day. And I always really enjoy going from my 1892 Goshen home past the other lovely Victorian homes and then to come upon the striking and dramatic uh, government center. What I think of it, however, is irrelevant. What you think of it aesthetically is irrelevant because it's the universal accepted opinion of everybody in uh, the field of architecture that it's an important uh, landmark building, it's been called a masterpiece, uh, to destroy it is nothing less than cultural vandalism. It's totally irresponsible, and I think you're aware, Goshen, our Orange County, is attracting already negative publicity nationwide, and in fact worldwide. I think you'll really regret it if you go ahead and do away with this building, especially when Mr. Kaufman has put forward a plan that will, in fact, save money. And I agree with many of the others who've spoken that Clark Patterson Lee seems to be in some kind of sweetheart arrangement. They seem to be completely uh, irresponsible, many deficiencies in everything that's already been done. I would say don't throw good money after bad. Uh, let us go to a workable plan. Uh, the uh, last factor is that Mr. Kaufman's plan in bringing art to uh, the center of Orange County would be an immense economic engine for years into the future. And those who care about jobs and stimulating the economy of this region uh, have to support the Kaufman proposal. I hope you'll reconsider. It I, I, uh, seems to me all of the real arguments are on that side. Thank you. Thank you. Pat O'Dwyer. Chairman, <laughs> members of the legislature, uh, no papers, no big speech, no big nothing. I just have a very simple idea. Give Mr. Take Mr. Kaufman's five million dollar check, give him the key, and let him get going. He's not going to demolish anything. He'll fix the courtrooms first, out from under the threat of the penalties from the state. And it's, Steve, you, uh, Chairman, you said that we got to do something. We've compromised, we've picked a plan, we've gone through all these other plans. But you know, sometimes the best is saved for last. And that is why I think that the Kaufman plan is the plan that would be an economic engine for the village, build the other, you don't have to take Kaufman's second building, but build another government center at, on the same property, and let's, let's get the jobs that these uh, gentlemen came here this afternoon uh, to hopefully get. I also would like to just take a second to thank all of you, especially uh, Legislator Ekes, for that wonderful statement. It was stunning. It was heartbreaking to see that flyer. And I thought of people like President Kennedy, President Reagan, Jim Brady, Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, 
It all starts with someone who's, for whatever reason, gone a field too far in their enthusiasm or their dedication to what they believe. Every one of you serve all of us. And that's the first thing we have to do, is to be respectful and thankful. And never, ever let that kind of thing happen to any of you again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pat. Salvatore Labruna, Goshen on the government side. Hi. Uh, I also wanted to speak in favor of the Kaufman plan. Uh, um, given the events of the meeting, obviously, my comments take on a slightly different meaning. But uh, just bear with me. I don't want to bore anyone, but I do want to speak out on this issue because it's something I really believe in. All right, so I'm not here today to speak out in support of a monument. I'm here to support an idea. An idea that has recently been embraced by the editorial board of the Times Held Record, the Town of Montgomery Chamber of Commerce, the Mayor of Warwick, and many others in the business community. This idea, also known as the two-building solution, would not only preserve the government center, but shift the burden of its maintenance to a private owner, an architect named Gene Kaufman who wants to convert the center into artist studios. This proposal includes a new government center in downtown Goshen and an art center that would generate tax revenue and economic activity. The new building solution would cost significantly less money and be done in less time than the current renovation plan by Clark Patterson and Lee. When you look at it purely from a purely economic or fiscal standpoint, the choice is clear. Those of us who support the two-building solution are not all preservationists or artists, and in fact, many of us are just interested in the plan principally for its potential for economic development. In the Orange County Chamber of Commerce in a survey to its members in September regarding the government center, about 55% favored selling, and less than 24% opposed the sale. This level of support and the support I mentioned above demonstrates a desire for the public to continue discussing this plan. Recently, I've been told that this idea that many of us strongly believe in is impossible, that it does not officially exist. And I'd be the first to admit that there are obstacles to the plan. But rather than being accepted as challenges to be overcome for the sake of such a great benefit to the people of Orange County, in the hands of some county officials, these obstacles have become excuses to stay the course. I've even, even seen some argue that we should continue to pay the most expensive option simply because we've already spent two million or so dollars. I, I'm sorry, I can't follow logic like that. Additionally, two county attorneys have warned that selecting the Kaufman plan would delay the opening of the government center because villages, vill the village of Goshen officials who have opposed the plan could, quote, tie up the project with a secret review for months, if not years. But at the same time, the mayor of Goshen says, my main objection to the plan is not the plan itself, but the fact that the community needs the most time expedient result. So if the county selected the Kaufman plan, why would Goshen officials tie up or slow down the process if they say they want the most expedient result? If the Kaufman plan was chosen by the legislator, Goshen officials would have every incentive to move forward as quickly as possible. That's just one example, but all these warnings from the county's attorney are nothing in comparison to the warning you all received this week when the bids came back for the demolition associated, associated with the county's current renovation plan. Clark Patterson and Lee estimated the cost of demolishing Division 2 would be $3.8 million. The two bids that were submitted, as you know, to the county were 7.4 and 7.8. Even the lower bid is nearly double the original estimate. Obviously, the demolition will require more work. It's not only cost more money, it costs more time. If the rest of the renovation plan goes like this, it doesn't seem far-fetched to imagine it costing nearly $100 million, taking five years or more. If the county's worried about the Office of Court Administration's warnings about getting the court space open as soon as possible, then county officials should be on the phone with them now, explaining how much more the current renovation plan would cost and how much longer it might take. I don't expect OCA to penalize the county for trying to live up to their demand for a speedy response to an urgent need for court space. At one point during the course of the, this debate, the legislator Shannon Wong told me I shouldn't give up when I was discouraged by setbacks, and clearly I've taken her advice to heart. I support good ideas in my community and I'm not afraid to stand up for them in the face of easy answers, particularly when these answers cost us so dearly. I know there are also legislators who have not given up. Legislators Matt Turnbull, Myrna Chemnitz, and Roseanne Sullivan have been talking about this plan and ways to make it work. Legislator Mike Anagnostakis and others have been focused on cost saving for taxpayers. Sorry. <laughs> Legislator Berkman has expressed concerns about Clark Patterson and Lee. And there are others, I'm sure. I believe you all still have a chance to be on the right side of history. I'll just end by saying this. 
Forget for a moment the architecture critics. If you fail to take advantage of this tremendous opportunity, it would be, in terms of economic development, one of the greatest mistakes in the history of Orange County. Someone once said, excuses are monuments of nothingness. And I refuse to accept that nothingness is the only monument this county is bent on preserving. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Julia Cole, Goshen on the Government Center. Developmentally and economically, I believe that uh, we have a tremendous opportunity to bring uh, <coughs> new people to the neighborhood. Uh, if you look at the Dia Center and the development of Beacon, uh, it's a, a huge thing for them, and I think that it, it's, it's an opportunity that you guys really should look at. Um, <coughs> um, as a taxpayer, Relax. in the course of listening to this today, um, and in the course of my reading the newspapers in the last couple of weeks, <coughs> there's a lot of things. I'm like, okay, there's no mold in the building. The mil building has leaks. Uh, the back door is bad. Okay. And you're going to spend $67 million to renovate a building that's pretty much okay. Uh, so as a preservationist, I say, why not just fix the building and use it? It's already a government center. Why not keep it as a government center? Regardless of the fact it's ugly or it's not ugly, 40 years ago, people decided to build that building. And so, like that. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Uh, Gloria Benelli, Goshen, uh, Government Center, also. Hi, Gloria Benelli. Good afternoon. Um, sitting here writing since I arrived at 3.30, and, and as we go on, things change. Um, first, yes, I am ultimately in support of the Hoffman plan. Um, but more importantly, and beyond all of that, I am in support of good government. And uh, earlier, very early in this afternoon, there was a mention of transparency. And I had a real question about that. And um, I would urge you urge you, every one of you, to really think about whether you really are a transparent body. Um, I know that you really mean to be, and I do believe that you want the best for your constituents. But every time I come to a meeting here, I hear one or more persons sitting on this day as saying, the first I heard about this was in the newspapers. Wait a minute, I didn't hear about this. Why don't I know about this? It really makes me question what's going on in my county legislature. If you folks among each other don't have transparency and don't know what's going on. So beyond discussing the building and everything else, I say to you that this is something that needs to be addressed. Um, second, I, I, um, I have to stop and commend this young man, Salvatore Laverna. Yes. And if this is the future of our county, then I am eminently proud and supportive of this younger generation. You know, I'm 60 years old. I mean, you know, I'm not around that much more. And even though this is very important for me, my real concern is, is people like Sal. This man loves his community. He's been through a tremendous amount of personal difficulty. And he has taken every meeting that I attend, he's been at, and he's been at more meetings. Um, I just want to finish by saying that, um, Ch Mr. Chairman, you mentioned that you don't feel the support out there in the community, and I beg to differ. Sal mentioned quite a number of people who have written uh, letters and editorials. Um, I walk around speaking to many people. I was at a village of Goshen meeting 
very ill attended, maybe 15 or so people, probably better than most meetings, but, and six or seven people spoke. One person was equivocal, was not really for the Kaufman plan. Everyone else there, Shannon, am I right? Was there for the Kaufman plan. I hear a lot of support. I don't know where you're, you're going. Um, finally, thank you. I'm going to suggest that you read the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal articles. A clear vote was made by the county legislators to renovate in 2012. But gradually, that plan has morphed to include additions and alterations so radical, including replacing the corduroy walls, et cetera, et cetera, as to destroy the original structure's integrity. If this were a facelift, the surgeon would be sued. <laughs> I understand there's a lawsuit coming. Irregularities have plagued the process. Preservation artists, uh, architectures from Boston with experience in Rudolph Building spent two years developing a restoration plan and then resigned abruptly. The warnings about mold, which I heard from this day is today. The warnings about mold turned out to be unfounded and a forensic report showed that neglected maintenance, not storm flooding, was the cause of the complex's poor condition. When New York State interceded to protect the buildings, uh, to protect the buildings threatened to withhold millions of post irene FEMA money, legislators found a loophole allowing them to redirect the money rather than promise to preserve the buildings. Most recently, hopes were riding on a white knight offer from Gene Kaufman. Or you blah, blah, blah. I'm finishing up with three more sentences. But early last month, the new county executive voted, uh, vetoed the possibility of the sale. The legislature has until Thursday to override, ride, blah, 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 blah. Now, a renovation plan more akin to character assassination looks all but inevitable with demolition expected to start as early as April. That's just one article in the Wall Street Journal this week. Thank you. Uh, desk is cleared. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Here, here.